This is the second part of the software debouncing for the ARM microcontrollers. In the previous video, I explained the concept of software debouncing and how push buttons, mechanical push buttons, create a bounce when you depress the button. We also wrote some pseudocode to explain how the flow would happen in the program. In this video, we're going to take that pseudocode and turn it into real code. And then we'll test the software debouncing in circuit. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and start making our real code. We'll start with the variables. And we're going to make them volatile so they're not optimized out when we're doing the, the building of this code. These variables will remain live and dynamic throughout the, the running of this code. So we use the volatile. And we'll start with the button pressed variable. So we'll make that a car. That's a relatively small variable, small size variable. It's only 8 bits. A side note with this variable type car is just an integer of 8 bits and you can have it either signed or unsigned. Signed, if you put signed before it, that means it could be a value from negative 128 to a positive value of 128. But car alone, it's unsigned, is 0 to 255. So we're going to initialize this to be 0. And this is actually really important because if we don't have it 0, then it won't actually get into this portion of the code for it to actually set this to a 1 in the first place. So you want to make sure that it's initialized to 0. So let's initialize our button press confidence level. And that's going to be also volatile. And this one will be an int because it could be a large number. And we'll initialize that to 0. And we'll do the released confidence level. So let's get the low-hanging fruit first. We'll use this variable because we're using it in these if statements. So we can go ahead and just populate that. So let's go ahead and do this. We can increase the button confidence level. And we're going to use the plus plus, which is the same thing as saying button press confidence level is equal to itself plus one. So it's adding one to this every single time that the pin has a one on it. We'll also want to reinitialize the button released confidence because if it's being pressed, then it's obviously not being released, so we can say that's zero. And once the button press confidence is past the confidence level, let's do that. So we're going to have an if statement there. If that is greater than we don't actually know an act, uh, a real threshold value yet. If it's greater than, let's say, 5,000 or 2,000 or 100 or 500, um, we could introduce another variable. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll call that confidence threshold. And we'll make that 200 to begin with. It's probably way too low, but we'll try that. The faster processors and the faster, more instructions you can run, the greater this threshold needs to be. So you can also use some code to determine the actual speed of the processor and use some divisor or some coefficient to determine this actual number. But let's just go ahead and hard code it for now and see what happens. So that would be confidence. If it's greater than the confidence threshold, then it will do this stuff. We can we don't know what this is going to be yet. Let's go ahead and update the button pressed variable to one. Now let's work on the bottom part where the button pressed is equal to one but where but it's the pin is being passed as zero. So we want to increase the button released and then the button pressed should be zero. And this way, if there was some up and down on the or bouncing, and it, it actually got in here and then it um, and then it bounced down to zero, then this is where it's actually reinitializing that variable, so it doesn't mistakenly think it's being pressed. 
So let's do this. Once the button level has been achieved, the threshold released confidence level is greater than confidence threshold, then we are going to update the button pressed variable to zero. You'll notice this is constantly increasing whether it is above the threshold or not, but I don't want that to happen. I want once it's gone above the threshold, like it's reached its 201, I don't want it to be increasing anymore. That can cause, that may cause some unpredictable behavior because we're, we may be exceeding the level of the int since this is going to be done in every single cycle of, of, um, of the infinite loop. So let's go ahead and put in an else here. If it's not beyond the confidence threshold, then it does the increment of the confidence levels. And we'll do the same thing to this. Now the only thing we need to do is toggle the LEDs. This is our last set of code statements to put in. So let's go ahead and we, we, we're going to need to introduce another variable here because we don't know the state of the LED. And we need to store that in some variable. So let's go ahead and put that in. LED lit state, whether it's lit or not. We'll use the cars. We'll use a car again because it's a small number. It's only 8-bit. We'll call that LED state. And that will be off to begin with. So let's go over here and say if the LED state is equal to 0, then we should turn it on. Else, if the LED state is on, we should turn it off. So let's go ahead and turn the LED state on. It should be equals equals. Else, if the LED state is on is, is 1, we should turn it off. Now we need the code to actually turn on and off the LED. So turn off LED. And over here, turn on LED. Oh, I'm sorry, turn on LED and turn off LED. So when the state is 0, we're going to turn it on. And when the state is 1, we're going to turn it off. So the code to turn on the LED, it's on the C port. So we're going to access the member of the BSRR. We're going to set a 1 in the pin 6 place. The bit set. Or the bit, actually, no, this is the bit. Yeah, bit set register. Let's see. That should be number 6. Okay. Now we're going to turn off the LED. It's the same. No, it's not the same thing. C. Access the member of the B. SRR again, or the BRR. And we're going to find the BR for bit reset for 6. Okay, we've written a lot of code. Let's go ahead and see if all of this will compile. Okay, everything was perfect. No errors. Now we're going to go ahead and program the microcontroller and see if it works. Okay, the microcontroller was programmed. When we press the button and release, the LED turns on. When we press it again and release, the LED turns off. Let's do this in many successions to see if we get any bounds. So far, so good. So 200 seems to be okay. can't seem to get it to bounce. Let's try decreasing the number and see what happens. Okay, let's decrease our threshold to 20. See what that does. Okay, the mark controller is programmed. Let's hit the button a few times. Oh, I see the balance. 
Oh, there you go again. So 20 is, is way too low. So you've seen a fully functional working program and circuit. Toggle the LED and debouncing through software. Click here to go to our exclusive video where you'll see much more detail on software debouncing and how I'm going to determine a really good threshold number using the oscilloscope to determine the characteristic of the push button and when the LED turns on. I will look at the two signals coming from the microcontroller, the LED output and the push button input where you can see the, the actual waveform or the signal from the push button and all of the bouncing that's going on and you'll also see on the other channel the LED turning on after all of that bouncing. I'll also create the program in a way that it's more compact and I'll also show you how to take the code and make it into a library so it can be introduced into the while loop, the never ending loop, as a single line where you specify the actual pin of the input for the push button in that library as a parameter going in and you specify the output pin which is the LED pin. Please consider watching that video. It helps us pay for the videos that we create and generate content for you. Thank you for watching.